friends, it's your guy NWB from Toronto Talk Sports and More. And today, I am joined as always by Justin Williams. How's it going, guys? Today's featured guest also hails from Newfoundland, like our friend Justin. He is the last man on defense playing at fullback for the Toronto Arrows in Major League Rugby. Also, this gentleman once has represented Canada at the Rugby World Cup, which is the third largest sporting event in the world behind the Summer Olympics and the FIFA World Cup. GTS Nation, I introduce to you Patrick Parker. How you doing, mate? Good, thanks. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, Major League Rugby for 2020 was unfortunately put on hold and then cancelled um, after 30 days in March. Talk us through some of the emotions that you went through at that point, and what does the immediate future hold for you? So, yeah, I was very disappointed that... Um the league got canceled obviously it had to for the uh health concerns of the of the country and i guess the two nations that this sport was being played in for that uh league which was the states as well but uh for me i, I was was gonna actually join the team with a week into just before the cancellation happened because i was finishing off a course at home and i was going to come back and join the team and it very disappointing because the team was doing awesome the arrows we're on a, a way that because of the way the, the weather is in Toronto at that time of the year, we have to play most of our away games at the start of the year. So they were on a hot streak. They were top of the East uh, looking really well and going into our home stretch. So, and last year we didn't have as good as a away start and we just were on fire at home. So if it was anything like last year, we would have had a, had a good season and who knows what would happen. So the team was disappointed, and I was disappointed I couldn't join them uh, uh, because of the virus. That was to be expected. It's like your, your passion for this. But you were mentioning that you're finishing up a course. So how has quarantine life been treating you then since uh, you can't really play rugby? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not too much different. Um, I'm currently doing my PhD at the same time as uh, playing rugby. So I was notified that I had to finish a couple in class, like in like basically had to come back to Newfoundland to finish a couple of courses. So I had to come home and delay joining up with the arrows. Uh, so once I finished that, I was ready to come back, but because of the quarantine life now I I'm doing um, like MCAT courses and uh, I'm doing an NCAP exam for uh, in July. So life is kind of quarantine life hasn't really, it's probably benefited my education wise because I'm, stuck at home having to study and everything like that. But rugby wise, I haven't played since the world cup, which was in uh, October and it's, I'm, I'm craving, craving some sports. Again. Like, You're getting that little bit of an itch, eh? Yeah. It's killing me. All I'm doing now is like, I'm going to the, tr the field here and doing training and stuff like that. I, I'm able to get a program from my uh, S and C guy and I do studying training. And then now they're starting to loosen up on st some restrictions. So I'm starting to, finally socialize with people again, which is not too bad. Which I was going to lead to my next question, but also a follow-up. Um, how is life in Newfoundland treating you, number one? And number two, how do you find the time? Like, are you sponsored by, like, Five Hour Energy, like, coffee? Like, how, how do you do all of this? No, I can barely... I wish. I wish if any of them would sponsor me, I'd gladly take it, but... Uh, you heard it here first. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my, my dad's pretty heavy into education and uh, he was, he's actually really big into rugby as well. He, he played for Ireland. Uh, he's from Ireland. He played uh, for, he's got a cap, which is like a start for, for your country. Uh, so he's played for Ireland before and then he moved over to Canada and kind of started rugby or not started rugby, but grew rugby in Newfoundland. But um, so I've, I've been involved with rugby for my whole life. And then for education wise, he's always been like, trying to push me and keep involved in schooling. He's, he's highly educated and is big into that. So I've been, as I've been trying to play rugby, there's always gaps and spaces. And he's like, oh, you should probably do this at this point and do this. So I'm always like trying to stay incorporated with school. And sometimes it's really hard. Like if you're on tour or away, and yeah. it's like, oh, I don't really want to be doing schoolwork or anything. So I'm lucky enough to have good supervisors who, uh, who keep me, uh, keep me on top and I'm able to find kind of chunks in the year where I can do a, just focus on s schooling. So right now in quarantine life, it's basically you wake up in the morning and do some schoolwork or, and then go to the gym or, or go to the field or do that in the morning and go study after. So right now it's fine. But when you're on tour, it's tough. 
Oh, I can imagine that. But you mentioned your father was uh, is highly educated. What does he do? Is he a teacher at Mun? Or? Um, he's a he's a or he was a nephrologist. He just um, uh, retired from like clinical work and working on the wards and stuff like that. Damn. He is um, he's very big into uh, research as well. So he's a clinical epidemiologist as well. So he's still doing that, and he uh, he leads the uh, quality of care Newfoundland. So mm. he does a lot of research and. Uh, medical practices and stuff like that trying to see where the resources should probably go i am not worthy to be in that man's presence <laughs> but uh to bring it back to sports real quick i understand that you played hockey for a while there what yeah. made you cho- choose hockey over rugby and was there pressure because your father not only played in canada but also coached as well uh no my dad really tries not to pressure me to make decisions he does like sit you down and lay out things like mm. uh this is like this would be a good option like just he wants to he wants to have the best for your future and everything so like that's so. as a father should <laughs> yeah exactly so uh i was playing a lot of hockey i i actually there's under 17 uh uh worlds tournament and i i played with uh, team atlantic and i got drafted in uh qhl which is the quebec kind of like hockey OHL. yeah um so i played like one or two games in my rookie season and then the team that i got drafted to they transitioned owners to a french speaking team mm. and i like went to camp there and was, was pretty excited and i ended up like and like i might have got cut anyways but uh they cut all the english players and traded all the oh. like traded all the english players as well so i was like this is stupid like mm. i don't really want to do this anymore and like came home and kind of just focused on schooling and stuff like that and then i had a couple calls that summer being like hey would you get tri- want to be traded and at that point, I kind of was like, I think I'm just going to transition to rugby. And in the long run, who knows what would have happened. But um, I'm, I'm ha- happy with my decision. I'm playing rugby in school and stuff like that. So, Jesus, yeah. man. You, you've lived a life. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, boy. I used to love ho- hockey. I still play every now and then. I, there's a senior league here. So anytime I have uh, time to come home, I, I play in the, the, the senior league here. So it's pretty fun. Slapping it. Eh? Jesus. All right. Very good. Now, let's jump into a hot tub time machine and go back five years. Now, you're playing rugby in the Goodyear Cup in Newfoundland. Yeah. And then one, in one of the games, you were basically pulled off the field mid-game. And then you were told to pack your bags and go to England for the Rugby World Cup. Tell us about that experience. Uh, that, was, uh, it, that was a really cool experience. I, um, I was playing in, like, a club game with probably – maybe like 20 people there is pouring rain out there's we were two teams playing against each other so there wasn't very many people actually watching the game and we're not really going to get many people at a club game in newfoundland anyways but we were playing we were just scored a try i believed and coming back to like set up for a kick receive a kick and one of the workers in the sports complex which is like right across or right next to the field kind of walked on and was like patrick prayer has to come off the field and my brother was there playing as well like what what the f are you talking about man like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No and he's like no he, i i think he just got called up to the world cup and like both teams everyone knows each other and both teams kind of pause and they like look and they're like yeah like everyone <laughs> celebrates and they're like i had to go off the field right away and basically go on standby on my phone i get a finally get a call from the manager he's uh gareth reese and he he's calling me being like yeah congrats like and like it's kind of a tough situation because one of my friends ended up breaking his jaw against Italy, so that was the guy I was replacing. So they they had an injury, and he was like, "Hey, you're, you're coming. Uh, don't worry, you're not in a rush. Like, uh, relax. Like, we're probably gonna fly you tomorrow." And then I'm like, "Okay," kind of hanging out with the team, and then like the game ends, and I uh, like maybe an hour later, I get a call from I think the coach called me and was like, "Hey." we actually want you to get on the next flight out of Newfoundland. So I was like, Oh shit. Like a couple mm-hmm. hours had to go home really? pack up stuff as fast as I could and get out there. But it was a really cool experience. Cause I got to experience it with a bunch of my friends and like the club community and getting hauled off a club game to go to like a world cup where there's like 60,000 people at games is <laughs> pretty fun. Uh, pretty funny experience. That's like something out of a Disney movie to be honest. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's like Rudy, the rugby edition. Exactly. I know they they always tell you because originally I was 
trying out for the team and like on tour with them. And then eventually they were like, oh, they're narrowing down the roster. They're like, sorry, you're, we're going to have to release you. And I'm super disappointed. And the coach at the time, Kieran Crowley, he coaches in Italy now. He, uh, he told me, he was like, and he's from New Zealand. And he's like, this happened to me. I, I didn't get selected for New Zealand one World Cup. And then there was injuries and he got called in. He's like, so stay like, stay in shape. So luckily I didn't end up playing in the World Cup that year, but uh, I got called in. So it was like still trying to play and stay in shape was, uh, is always something you're supposed to do, I say. Amazing. Now I grew up in Australia, so I know all about New Zealand and how good they are at rugby. My roommate <laughs> is from New Zealand, so you will remind me how good they are at rugby. Fast forward to 2019, you're back at the Rugby World Cup in Japan and you get to face the All Blacks of New Zealand who have one of the highest winning percentages in world sport. Yeah. What was it like playing uh, such a team? Uh, it was an awesome experience. Like we got, we got smoked obviously. And like, maybe we get a little shell shocked here or there. Like they're so good. They know they're just instincts for rugby is amazing. Whereas we're, you're not really playing high level rugby too often in Canada where they're constantly playing as they're growing up. So our experience level is, and especially getting put under pressure at that level, it, it's just innate to them. Whereas we need reps, reps, and try to get better. So they kind of put us to the sword, but the experience overall was amazing. We were in front of this half crowd and um, can't, I, I believe it might've been Oita, but uh, yeah. it was in Japan and it was a uh, packed crowd, maybe 40 to 50,000 people. They, uh, they do the haka with, um, before games, which is a cool experience to, to face. It's not uh, – I wouldn't say it's like an intimidating factor. It more so pumps you up, but mm. you get all fired up because it's like well-renowned and everything like that. So – and the crowd's going nuts. But you get a couple minutes after the haka to kind of like, okay, let's, let's settle down here because I'd say it's more of an advantage for them to be able to do that every game. And then – we kick off and they're they're just such a good team and you make any mistake and they're going to score on you and that's what happened to us quite a bit and we had like phases here and there where or sections in the game where we were able to hold on but then there were sections of the game where they'd like score a try we'd kick off they'd score a try within minutes and we'd be like try because you just make one mistake and they they'll 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 kill you for it but it was an awesome experience i got to i guess my opposite number was debatably the best player in the world and he might still be at Bowden Barrett. So mm-hmm. got to exchange jerseys with him. So that was a cool experience. He's oh, got, awesome. he was playing with three of his brother or two of his brothers at the same time. And he's got a bunch of brothers that play rugby. I got a bunch of brothers that play rugby. So, but I've played with them with the Newfoundland team and stuff like the, my brothers with the Newfoundland team. So it was kind of cool to kind of talk about that. Oh my God. Changing jerseys with that. I got, I would take down my degrees and just replace that with the jersey. I was like, degrees are useless. Forget this. Look at this. Oh, my God. My, but, my dad actually, most of his – he's played a bunch of times against New Zealand. His cap for Ireland was against New Zealand, and he, uh, he's got uh, – he's played for Munster, which is a club side in um, Ireland, and they've mm-hmm. played against New Zealand a bunch of times. So he's played really? against them. He's tied them a couple times. And so the jersey now kind of represents – we might hang it up in his, his house because – uh, it rep- he's played against them so many times. It's kind of a cool little memento. Oh, definitely. I would like I said, degrees useless. Jersey up there. So, um, but you were in Japan. Did you get much time to kind of look around, get to feel things out? Did you go to like a, a game of anything aside from rugby? Did you try the sushi there? Like what? Yeah. What was your- so our first week actually. So we we went to Nagato. So Nagato is kind of a smaller community, but mm. they have a like they had a really nice hotel. It's like a pretty nice like spa resort hotel that they have there Mm -hmm. but they weren't actually hosting a game and we weren't playing until the sec the we were the last team to play our first game so they hosted us and because there was no other teams and no other games there they were so happy to see us we and we had a bit of downtime so we got to experience the culture they treated us so well there and uh and like the culture there they just want to make you feel welcome and um and everything like that so it was an awesome. It was an awesome experience to be there, and uh, the food there. I, I think it's amazing. Like some people might not like it as much. Like some people don't like raw fish or anything like that. But I like it and like sushi and uh, and all that. So got to try out a lot of things. But we were spoiled. Like even when you go to other other uh, other cities and stuff like that, we were just spoiled with the top notch food. 
Well, I was going to say, because when I was in, in Newfoundland, I was told to try the sushi there because the fish is caught that day. Yeah. And do, do you know the difference between like Newfoundland sushi versus like Japan sushi from the motherland versus the friendly no, land? In Japan, I found they did a lot of like uh, nigiri style where they just kind of have the fresh piece put on top of a bed of rice. Right. And, uh, Newfoundland will probably have more so like the maki style, or maybe that's just what I order when I get to Newfoundland. <laughs> The uh, there's a place here. There's I actually like the sushi here, and I, I've like spent a lot of time in Victoria where I uh, lived as well. So the sushi there is really nice too. But um, there's a restaurant called Basho here, and um, I, I believe the the uh, chef's name is Tak, and uh, he's a Newfoundlander. But I, I think his heritage is Japanese. But God, the restaurant's amazing. His uh, he's 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 so good. So I'd say he's he'd be comparable to uh, the food I had over there. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's awesome. Staying on um, Japan for a second, rugby is back in the Summer Olympics. Uh, it came back in 2016 in the form of Rugby Sevens. Yeah. Can you see yourself competing in Tokyo next year in 2021 as a Sevens player for Canada? Um, I, I highly doubt it. I, uh, I, I do like Sevens. Like it's, um, I prefer Fifteens. And I played, when I was younger, I played about seven, uh, I got seven legs maybe or seven tournaments. Um, and they have like 10 tournaments in a year and stuff like that. So, um, and, and I'm, because I was over there playing and training, I've got a ton of really lifelong friends that still play and it's pretty disappointing for them. I'd, and, um, like some of them probably were, that, that would have been their last year, like maybe play Olympics and then kind of, uh, settle down. But, um, but they're still, they're still in great shape and, uh, they're still qualified for the Olympics. So they're, uh, they're going to still go at it. But for me, um, even the coach, like I, I, I know him as well, but I, I doubt I'd be playing in that. Um, it's, it's slightly a different game. I might not be as fast as some of my, uh, some of my friends over there, but um, who knows? I, I highly doubt it. I, I'm, I'm focused on 15s and playing with the arrows and everything like that. So I would say, I would say no. And I, I'd say I wouldn't even make the team. Their, their, uh, their squad is quite strong. They're playing really good rugby. They, their last tournament was in Vancouver Sevens, and they were they were awesome. Like, they they performed really well in front of the uh, the hometown. All righty then. So I have a, a little quick question. If I can jump in here um, with the Toronto Arrow, how did that happen? Like, did they call you up? Did you try out? Like, how did you get signed with them? Um. So there was like a, a tournament called the Canadian Rugby Championship CRC, and it mm. used to be kind of the Atlantic provinces, which was the Atlantic rock. The Ontario team was Ontario blues and there was the Prairie wolf pack. And then the uh, BC bears. And we played a uh, four league tournament, which is basically just sometimes some years if we wouldn't have enough funding, we would just have to play it over like a two weekends in one location, or we'd be able to play like home and aways, mm -hmm. but it's pretty tough with a full uh, non like funded league like that. But uh the blues kind of transitioned into a, um, they, they had a like, really good foundation and Ontario has a lot of good rugby players, but uh, they kind of transitioned into the arrows. They have similar coaching staff. Uh, their manager, Mark Winokur was one, of, I guess, probably one of the key contributors, like along with the owner, Bill Webb, who's an amazing guy. He, they both put in a lot of work uh, to try to make the arrows happen and they've done a fantastic job. But because I played with the rock, they were always playing against each other and, uh, the uh, arrows are kind of like they want to make Canadian rugby better as well. So mm. at the same time, have a lot of rug Canadian rugby players. So they, uh, we played them or it was at the tournament and they had an exhibition game. So they were kind of just starting. They would have had an exhibition game a couple weeks after the CRC. They were like, Hey, uh, just to let you know, like, this is not the blues. Cause we'd have a rivalry. Uh, they're like, we're playing with the arrows. Like, would you want to play with us just like this exhibition game? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, why not? Like, ended up playing with them, loved it. Uh, and now I've kind of been associated with them for a while. I just, it's been tough cause I've been kind of bouncing around with school and stuff like that. So uh, sometimes I miss out on times. And last year I missed out on the start of the season cause we had a Canadian tournament called the ARC that was going on during the same time. But now that the, all the international windows are outside the MLR, it'll be nice to get back uh, playing with them full time. So they're good, great organization and some, so hopefully we can continue being uh, being a good squad. 
Right, and for our audience, you can, you can watch the games for the Arrows down at uh, Lamport Stadium as well as at York. And they are also televised on ESN. Mm -hmm. I believe they're doing a, a power hour every Saturday for the uh, replay of some of the games. So I'm not sure if, uh, if people are, are craving sports as much as I am. So <laughs> Yes. Right. We, have, we have to get our fix in these times. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Um, another quick little silly question for you there. I just kind of thought of right now. Um, I doubt this would ever happen, but would you guys, the Toronto Arrow, ever scrimmage against the Toronto Wolfpack? So they're, uh, they're two different teams or mm -hmm. uh, leagues type of thing. Yeah. So uh, rugby league is, uh, is, is quite different, even though it like has the rugby aspect of it, but uh, like there's no rocks. You have to go back 10 meters and you can only have the ball for six phases, I believe. I've actually never played it. I've I've played it as a conditioning like, uh, like game like for fitness that we would play, and it's exhausting. Like it's a tough sport. So um, I'm not sure. Like maybe we could have like a little like hit out, but I f I feel like full contact rugby league. They just absolutely demolish us. Some of those guys are mutants, but uh, uh, and great players. But yeah, you know, like son Bill Bill Williams, we played against in uh, in that New Zealand game in Japan. He's playing with the Wolfpack right now. Mm. Right. So uh, he he played both and everything like that. He's uh, he's an amazing rugby player. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if we'd ever play a scrimmage, or if they could come up with like a little blend of the both of both games. Who knows? But um, I could see us playing like a little training session together and stuff like that. Could uh, get integrated. That'd be nice. So both both play in Lamport. It's. Uh, I was gonna say yeah yeah. I've been yeah. to a Wolfpack game, but unfortunately, I haven't seen an Arrows yet. It's been yeah, on my yeah. list. Yeah, la last year was our first. Um, first home or first season in the MLR and MLR is such a new league and everything. Yeah. And this year was hopefully would add, would add a bigger crowd. Cause by the end of it, we were getting good, uh, good showings and everything like that. So who is the toughest player that you have to tackle in world rugby? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think when I, the problem, the thing with when you play 15 is you don't really have to get those like aggressive tackles. Like usually you're, in that you're trying to stop the bleeding and stuff like that. So you're not getting, you do get run over and everything like that, but you're not like when you're, when I play 10 or 12, you're in the, the thick of it. So mm. I'm trying to think I could say Sonny Bill Williams. Cause I kind of tackled him. I, I tackled him, but he wasn't really running at me hard, but right. it's a, it's a tough decision. Like there's a, there's a couple, even for the States, they have a couple heavy ball runners as well. That and I've played in the the midfield with them, and they've uh, they've caused some havoc. Um, I, I can't. I, I'm trying to figure out who would be the toughest. Some sometimes you'd actually think uh, the, the players that can run you over, you can kind of trip up, mm. um, which is not too bad because uh, <laughs> sometimes your flanker can come in and steal the ball. Yeah, the players right. who have the quick footwork are so hard to get. You can't yeah. even get a finger on them. So the. Uh, I remember like one game, I can't remember the player's name. I was trying to just think of it, but he plays for Romania as their eight man. And our scrum was kind of getting beat up the whole time. And I was playing 10. So the scrum's here and I'm kind of on the side. I'm the first defender next to, next to it. And our scrum's going backwards. And the eight man is just puts his head up, looks at me, looks down, looks at me looks down, I'm like, oh, here we go. Like <laughs> this guy weighs more than me. And he just picks up eventually just picks up the ball, sprints at me, and I just have to like basically just throw my body into his legs so he trips up. And mm -hmm. but sometimes it works. Like we ended up getting a steal because our flankers are able to jump on top of the ball and stuff like that. So you get run over as a, a lot when you're a smaller guy, but um but it's part of the job. <laughs> right. I I'll, I'll always remember watching old videos in the nineties of Jonah Lomu from New Zealand, and oh, yeah. we'll take three or four guys, especially in, against England in the 95 World Cup. He's got three or four guys just hanging off him, and he's just going about his business, running down the line. It's, it's, it's rugby is a game of um, different shapes and sizes, for sure. Oh, it definitely is. Like, some of the – like, Jonah Lomu just had so much speed and power, but, like, the uh, the winger for South Africa, Chelsea Kobe, he is – he's not big. He's a small guy, but he's so fast and – and explosive that once he changes his directions, no one can get a solid hit on him and he just breaks tackles. He's, he's, a, he's an amazing guy to watch. Yeah. Now, Patrick, 
for, for the kids. We're going to ask this question for the kids. For yeah. The young people that want to get into rugby in Canada, what is some advice you'd pass on to them? Um, I think uh, rugby gives, well, I say for kids right now, they've, they, they wouldn't be thinking uh, more so for the parents. It gives so much good values uh, at growing up as a like rugby player for, for the kids. I think it's just such a fun, fun game and everyone can play it. Um, and, and like, yeah, but like we said, every safe and size can play it. There's, there's a position from one to 15 that you can find, find your, uh, find your niche. And then I finally just make so much good, good friendships. Like I've been involved with rugby for almost my whole life. A lot of my like good friends are just through rugby and I have lifelong friends through rugby. And if you grow up kind of playing rugby and you want it and you move to new cities, you can go anywhere and join up a rugby club and they'll integrate you and accept you right away. And it's, I just think that's an amazing aspect of rugby, how, you, you can be from anywhere and they'll just be like, Hey, come on in. Well, oh, you, you're looking for a job. Oh, we'll try to help you out with that. Oh, you need somewhere to live. Oh, we'll put you up here, try to get you on your feet and everything like that. So it's a really amazing, uh, like the culture of rugby is amazing. And it's something that I'm so happy to be involved with. And I'll probably stay involved with uh, a, a club community forever. Uh, and then overall, like if parents are th worried about like, or what sports they should bring in, I think it gives a lot of good values. You have to, you have a big team, you have to play for your team. It brings out leadership and, um, and then I guess adversity and stuff like that. It's a tough game. You get kind of beat up and uh, things can happen, but um, it's, yeah, it's an amazing game. I think, I think everyone should try, try, try it out here or there, even if it's just touch or flag foot or flag rugby. Yeah. And I've never played rugby, but I'm now very interested. I've watched it, but I've never yeah. physically gone on the pitch before. I played American football. That's that's. Oh yeah, that's okay, funny. cool. I've, I saw in, here it's uh, in Newfoundland. There is no. There might be some now, but when I was growing up, there was no American football. And I've played some flag and played and stuff like that. I've never played contact football, but I played some flag and stuff like that and touch. But and it's so much fun. It so is. Fun. But I've never played uh, fully kind of organized football. It's all right. Maybe I love, I love football, though. I watch it religiously. Fantasy. I'm like addicted to fantasy football. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm fingers crossed that everything goes well. I'm an Eagles fan, though, so uh, I was disappointed that one of their own line just tore his Achilles and I'm devastated. Yeah. And yeah, this bro. interview is now over. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Eagles did us all a favor a couple of years ago when they beat the Patriots. So I know. What? The Philly special. I can't forget it. Trey Burton makes a from Nick Foles. Sorry, who are you? I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, speaking of games, I believe Justin has prepared a game for you to play. Right. So I do have a game prepared for us. And, you know, I was hoping your father would be here. But nevertheless, you have to represent your whole household and let's get her done. All right. So this game is called Two Truths, One Lie, the Newfie Edition, Hater Bye. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be bad at this. I'd say I'm <laughs> county. So if, if it's any tough, uh, even geograph geographical questions around here, I'll be uh, hard hard task. I love your newfie confidence, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I have the same, which is why I'm a comedian. Um, so basically, how the game goes, it's pretty simple. I give you three options. There's different rounds, five rounds. There'll be three options. Two of them will be the truth. One will be a lie. Your job is to select the lie. All right. Okay. Okay. So round number one. St. John's is the oldest city in North America, appearing in maps as early as 1519 or two. Uh, Canadian actor Sean Doyle and Canadian singer Alan Doyle are related. Or C, Newfoundland is the 15th largest island in the world. Oh. So it, would the... When, when did they join... No, I'm not. So, so would they have to be a part of Canada for the? So, is number one the lie because they weren't a part of Canada at that time? Actually, it's so funny you say that because I thought the exact same thing too. But technically, it's not. Like you, you're both right and you're wrong. The actual wrong one is Sean Doyle and Alan Doyle being. Okay, related. that was the other one. I was kind of all three of them actually. I was kind of threw me for a loop, but. 
Yeah, because yeah. I heard I you were very- I didn't know if the first one was like a trick question as in like they weren't part of Canada at the time, but yeah, that makes sense. So it, it technically wasn't, but it was still somehow still part of North America. I don't know how. Oh, okay. Whatever, 15, 19. Oh, it was, it, was a, it was probably part of North America because it was, I, wasn't it, I think it was a British colony and- mm. Yeah, it was Britain. North America. Technically, because they hadn't separated yet, so. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I see what you did there. But anyways, <clears throat> round two. You did well in the first one. Uh, a, there are no snakes, skunks, deers, porcupines, or groundhogs in Newfoundland. B, moose are not native to Newfoundland, but have been uh, introduced in 1904, which today they have more than 100,000 on the island. Or C, lightning strikes there more often than any other province. Which is the lie, sir. So, I, I, I think two is correct. I think... I could see three being completely right. I think A is like, just cause it rains here so much and the weather's crazy. But uh, yeah, I, I would say one. One? one. So okay. the lie is actually- One would be true. There is no, there is no, uh, so it says no porcupines, snakes. Yeah, there, no snakes, no skunks. Okay, no, if it's no, then the, yeah, I think that's true. So uh, C, the third one. You are correct. Unlike well, where, right. I was gonna say, unlike where, uh, <laughs> Nia's is from where everything there is trying to eat you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Australia. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, All the wildlife. <laughs> yeah. Here we just have so many moose that uh, I guess that we got a lot of deaths from car accidents from moose, but yeah, they're everywhere. I was going to nope. say, my, my dad's from uh, St. Mary's Bay. We were driving up from St. John's to St. Mary's Bay. We passed like a fleet of them. Yeah, when, like, you're, oh. when you're in the city, it's like you don't see them at all. Every now and then you'll see one roaming around in a random neighborhood and you're like, People are like, oh man, like check out this moose. Like, yeah, I tell oh, place. But I've seen him a couple times just driving down the highway, and it's not too bad when it's like light out. But I, I could, I could see, I could see why it's nighttime because they can crush your car. And they're massive. They're yeah, massive. yeah, they're massive. Okay, round three, sir. So, so right now you're one and one. Um, <clears throat> number one. At one point in Newfoundland's history, there was no legal drinking age. Two, uh, Newfoundland joined Confederation March 31st, 1949. C, my father, Andrew Williams, loved Newfoundland so much, he made sure his only son was born March 31st, 1994. Which is the lie. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta say, see. No, it's not. It's the truth. <laughs> the the lie in this one is Newfoundland uh, had no point had a uh, legal drinking age. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, my dad was like, "You're born March 31st, 1994. The Confederation yeah. was March 31st, 1949." Hang on, hang on. So that's an amazing uh, control there. Oh, oh yeah. He he was married 11 years too, so Buddy had really good control. <laughs> He was like, Lisa, this day, this time. Yeah. This one about, did, did you say that Newfoundland does not have a legal drinking That was one of the, uh, th that was the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> Knee got very excited. <laughs> I'm going to Newfoundland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm coming up. <laughs> All of TTS. It's no longer TTS, it's Newfoundland Talk Sports. That's NTS. right. <laughs> NTS. Uh, <laughs> a division of TTS. Um, anyways, so round four. Uh, number one, Newfoundland has the most wineries in Canada. Two, uh, the accent that Newfoundland is famous for is very similar to the Watford, Ireland accent, which is why I was hoping your father would be here. And C, there is no pub, there, sorry, there are more pubs per square foot on George Street than anywhere else in Canada. I know, I know that one's right. Uh, yeah. I would say, I would say A. My dad does have a bit of a Cork accent, so. But um, yeah, I would. My guess would be A. You are correct, sir. All right. Now here's the last one. Here's for all the marbles. <clears throat> Round five. And feel free to play this back for your father too. See what he does. Yeah. Um, see if he knows. Exactly. Okay. In 1950, Gander, Newfoundland, was the busiest airport. Before the invention of the jetliner, Gander was the launch point and refueling station for all flights in Canada. That was the first one. The second one, uh, the Newfoundland pony was originally discovered in Norway. Or three, 
Newfoundland has one of the most spectacular whale populations in the world with 22 different species of whale. Oh, which one's false? Hmm. I, I think I'm going to go with B. The pony. B, the pony. You are correct, sir. Yes. Oh, my God. This man knows ponies and rugby. God. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's um, four out of five, right? Uh, I think it was three, three, three out, out of five. five. Yeah. I, I got the last one, or the first one wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he got the animal one right. Yes. It was originally wrong, but you switched yeah, it last yeah, second. Yeah, switch last second. Yeah, it's, you it's, it, it, it's a win. <laughs> I'm, gonna, yeah, call, yeah. I'm calling it a win. It's all, above 50%. That's a W. That's, what's all about. that's all that matters. <laughs> that's yeah, all that's engineering. Bad. Get that pops. That's <laughs> all I did for engineering. I was like, yo, I passed the 52. God bless. Yeah. <laughs> I got so, the I got the That's what's up. So you're studying towards a PhD. So this, does this mean we can call you Dr. Rugby from now on? Um, I'd say it'll be a couple years before uh, I get that prefix. Uh, some of my teammates call me doctor anyways, even though uh, I, <laughs> I'm i not even close to finish that uh, thesis process yet. But hopefully, hopefully soon. All right. Well, we wish you all the best with that. And also with your rugby endeavors with the Arrows and with Team Canada. We appreciate your time, Patrick. Um, we also want to wish a happy Father's Day to your dad, Pat. Um, oh, as you record, we are a couple of days out from Father's Day here in Canada. And... For everyone out there, happy Father's Day, and this is Toronto Talks for some more. For the love of the six, let's connect. See ya. Thank you for watching. Please click the like button and leave us a comment with your feedback. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications to see more engaging and interactive content. Toronto Talks Sports and more. For the love of the six, let's connect.